Senator Grace Poe on Wednesday, August 18, says the Office of the Ombudsman should have already suspended Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, even just preventively. Poe's sentiments come as the Health Department is embroiled in a controversial audit report showing that a total of 67 billion pesos in pandemic funds were deficiently used. Poe cites Ombudsman Samuel Martires' resolution in October 2020 imposing six-month preventive suspensions on eight PhilHealth executives who were facing a graft complaint. Poe suggests, given that same principle, Duque should be treated similarly. Shouldn't Secretary Duque be suspended by now? If we are going to apply uh, the same judgment as what happened to the field health executives. The senator says non obligation of 11 billion pesos for hazard pay for frontliners is criminal. Former Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales says Martires should open an investigation now on the audit. Martires earlier said he would rather wait for the audit process to end. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC decides not to extend voter registration for the 2022 elections beyond September 30, 2021. Instead, it decides to extend voter registration hours and conduct it even on Saturdays and on holidays until the deadline. Currently, registration hours in areas under general community quarantine and modified GCQ are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Monday to Saturday. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez says the Comelec is worried that extending the deadline might result in a domino effect that would delay other activities. Several lawmakers and youth groups are calling on the commission to move the deadline by at least a month, citing the repeated suspension of voter registration operations. Vote-rich Metro Manila in particular endured five months of hard lockdowns in 2020 and at least two months of hard lockdowns in 2021. Jimenez adds, voter registration will not be opened in areas that remain under enhanced community quarantine or ECQ and modified ECQ, the strictest forms of lockdown under the Duterte administration. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. The Taliban on Tuesday, August 17, says it wants peaceful relations with other countries and will respect the rights of women within the framework of Islamic law. In its first official news briefing since its lightning seizure of Kabul, the Taliban announcement suggests a softer line than its rule 20 years ago. Women will be afforded all their rights, uh, whether it is in work or other activities, because women are a key part of society. And uh, we are guaranteeing all their rights within the limits of Islam. The European Union says it will only cooperate with the Afghan government following the Taliban's return to power if it respects fundamental rights, including those of women. But women in Afghanistan express skepticism. The Taliban spokesman says the new rulers will not seek retribution against former soldiers and government officials. He adds, There is a huge difference between the Taliban now and 20 years ago, assuring Afghans that nobody is going to harm them or knock on their doors. I must remind you that we forgive everyone because it is in the interest of peace and stability in Afghanistan. All the groups that were confronting us are all forgiven. Meantime, U.S. President Joe Biden's approval rating drops by 7 percentage points to 46 percent, the lowest level of his seven-month-long presidency, according to a Reuters Ipsos poll conducted on Monday. Biden's popularity drops as the Taliban entered Kabul, wiping away two decades of U.S. military presence that cost nearly one trillion taxpayer dollars and thousands of American lives. I am a ship, and she is my anchor. This is how Daniel Padilla describes his nine-year relationship with girlfriend Catherine Bernardo in an interview with Boy Abunda. The real-to-real couple, who's also celebrating their 10th anniversary as a love team this year, have constantly been sharing snippets of their life through social media posts and vlogs. Danielle says one of the secrets to having a happy relationship is giving one's partner some me-time. But Danielle explains, despite wanting time apart and being together for almost a decade, he still feels eager to spend time with his girlfriend. The 26-year-old actor adds, they still have more things to learn before he and Catherine can get married. 
Meantime, Ben and Ben is set to release a new song in collaboration with Parokya ni Edgar frontman Chito Miranda. The indie folk pop band on Monday, August 16 says this is a dream come true. I didn't know what to expect. I was hoping for a type of song na ganito, pero when you gave me the song, I ibang klase to, talaga, ano. Uh, out of the, out of everyone's comfort zone, I think. While they did not give more details about the track, Chito says the song leans towards the rock punk genre. K-pop girl group Red Velvet makes its long-awaited comeback with the release of the music video of Queendom. It also releases the group's sixth mini-album of the same name. The music video sees the girls of Red Velvet in a whimsical concept highlighting the refreshing vocals. In a tweet, Red Velvet says the title track is a pop dance song with a message that we are all queens of our lives and that together we shine more beautifully. Queendom marks Red Velvet's first group comeback since the repackaged album The Reva Festival Finale in December 2019. They had a short hiatus after member Wendy suffered a stage accident at the end of 2019, which left her hospitalized for several months. Meantime, K-pop group Tomorrow X Together or TXT releases its first album repackaged, The Chaos Chapter, Fighter Escape, and a music video for the single Loser Lover. In an interview with Teen Vogue, the group says the song is an anthem not just for the Gen Z, but also for the older generations who feel they walk in the shadow of the youth they never had. TXT debuted in 2019 and is managed by Hybe, formerly Big Hit Entertainment. <laughs>